Hello and a warm welcome back to Hughes Nursery and in today's video we'll be looking at soil pH and how soil pH affects plant growth. We'll then be looking at ways to bring your soil pH to a better level by using only organic soil amendments which you can get for cheap or for free. I've got some annotations here which you can use to navigate to different parts of the video. Soil pH is a scale which tells you how acid or alkaline your soil is and is measured easily with a cheap DIY kit that you can get from garden centres and gives you a general idea of how acid or alkaline your soil is. They work by matching the solution colour with a chart on the instructions and whichever colour it is closest to, that is your pH. If you'll want more accurate results, you'll need to send them off to a lab, however that will cost more and a DIY kit is good enough scale for anyone wanting to grow their own vegetables. We all know for the majority of plants, too much acid is just as bad as too much alkaline when you're trying to grow vegetables. So with vegetables, you want to aim for a soil pH of around 6 to 7, which is slightly acidic to neutral. How exactly does soil pH, though, affect the vegetable's growth? Nutrients need a certain pH to become plants available. Let's look at the vital nutrient of nitrogen which is part of the three primary elements for a healthy plant, along with phosphorus and potassium. Nitrogen is responsible for the green growth of plants and helps them grow faster. Patrick inspired me to go and get some used coffee grounds, and over the spring and summer, I'll be mulching my leafy greens with them this year to give them an extra boost of growth with a slow release of nitrogen into their root system with the hope of an increased yield for less costs. The amount of available nitrogen becomes limited at a lower soil pH, therefore this can prevent your vegetables from thriving. Another nutrient phosphate, which contains the element phosphorus, is usually only fully available with a pH range of 6.5 to 7.5. Phosphorus is responsible for healthy root growth, disease resistance, flowering and seed production, and no other element could replace its properties. Therefore, it's very important the soil pH is at the neutral range. An exception to this is when plants form bonds and relationships with soil-borne fungi, which will release phosphates to plants in acidic conditions. To find out more about these soil-borne fungi, called mycorrhiza, take a look at Patrick's and Stephen's video, explaining exactly what they are. Trace elements can also become less plant-available at a low soil pH, like molybdenum, boron and copper. Legumes such as beans which both act as food supply for us and as nitrogen fixtures to the soil are more prone to molybdenum deficiency because the bacteria which the roots use to collect nitrogen will not work as well in acidic soils. Whilst researching this topic I came across an extension from the University of Vermont which gave five reasons why soil pH is important. The first is soil bacteria, which releases nitrogen from organic matter in the pH range of 5.5 to 7. The second and third is nutrient leaching and availability, where pH of below 5, the plant nutrients leach out of the soil faster, and nutrients for plants are generally most available between 5.5 and 6.5. Fourth reason why soil pH is important is because of the elements aluminium, iron, and manganese, which can actually reach toxic levels as the pH decreases. The final reason is soil structure, and it is easier to work with soils in the middle pH range rather than high acid or alkaline, which can be difficult to work with. To get all the details as well as a list of what each vegetable likes its pH to be for the best crops, take a look at the link in the description under the sources. There are plants, however, who have adapted to a high or low pH soil, such as cranberries who thrive in acidic soils. They've adapted to a low nitrogen levels of soil, but we can't make our vegetables adapt to that. Let us now look at some organic soil amendments that we can use to create a better pH to grow vegetables in. Well, in a nutshell, the best option for raising or lowering your pH is to add organic matter. According to the Grow It Organically website, plants grown in soil with a lot of organic matter have healthier roots. They're able to extract enough nutrients from the soil, 
even when the pH isn't optimal. Organic matter improves soil because it provides it with more nutrients and will increase the plant's tolerance for acidic and alkaline conditions. If you want to grow something like blueberries but your soil isn't acidic enough, it is best to grow them in containers where you only need to change a small amount, otherwise without using lime or sulphur, it is difficult to make big changes to raised beds. In simple terms, to bring your soil pH from a too acidic or too alkaline level, it is best to dig in 50% compost to start neutralising it and mulch the beds throughout the growing season with leaves and other amendments. I hope you found this video interesting and if you have any other comments or questions please just post them down below and make sure to look in the description for some further reading on it. If you haven't yet please consider joining this community by subscribing so you can keep up to date with everything that's going on as well as how you can grow organic produce inexpensively. Thank you very much for watching and see you again soon. Goodbye.